44 seconds of two logos culminating in this cutesy remake of the DreamWorks one, which is apparently required for any of the recent releases. Survival of the fittest. Narration. Quit monkeying around. Hot dogs are getting cold. But you just took them off the grill. Movie wastes no time getting in a cheap pun at the expense of logic. Some days I rescued my parents. And other days I watched those motherfuckers die. Did you know that the triangle is the strongest shape found in nature? Somewhere Phil Jackson is solemnly nodding. Three stories, five hugs, and my special song, right? God damn, this kid is demanding. These parents aren't happy. They're clearly suffering from Stockholm Syndrome. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. Movie likely blows half of its budget on licensing one Beatles song. They couldn't just bust out a Cindy Lauper track or something? Can't imagine something like Hole in My Heart would have cost that much. Maybe two Snickers bars and a tube of lube? Not sure where I came up with that offer, but I have some very weird cravings. How would you like to have a baby brother? No thanks. I'm enough. Mom looks like she's way too far along with the pregnancy to be asking the kid his thoughts now. I was not prepared for the fact that there might be more ass shots in this movie than a Nicki Minaj video. Why is Boss Baby the only infant that's being openly assaulted by the baby maker? <laughs> you already, movie. The last time I was this worried about an infant was The Hills Have Eyes. If you were confused after six minutes of horror movie contraptions, nightmare hallucinations, and baby butt shots that you were not at the correct movie, DreamWorks assures you that yes, this is the shit you paid to see. The toys starting their day without human involvement, and the Randy Newman-esque piano strokes should in no way whatsoever make you think of the Toy Story movies. My parents always said that I had an overactive imagination. In case the first five minutes of the film set in Tim's imagination didn't sell that point to you. Meet your new baby <laughs> Who apparently aged at least six months during the car ride home, given the size of this little f***er. Jesus f Christ, can this movie go more than five minutes without a naked baby shot? What is the f***ing deal? Say naked! No. These weirdo parents not only took a picture of their naked children, then printed it off, but also framed that and put it up on the f***ing wall. This impossible milk carton impossibly holds enough milk to spill over Tim's equally sized cup. In the previous shot, Tim's dinner was clearly still on the table, even after it went in his face. But in this shot, it's nowhere to be found. Also, we may be clearly f***ing with physics in this movie, but it's asking me to believe an infant has equivalent strength as a seven-year-old? Look at him! He wears a suit! Finally, the suit and briefcase are brought up, but how could this not have been brought up on day one? Hello, it's time for my three stories, five hugs, and special song. Have his parents continued to do this? Because it's been at least several nights, and the baby's taken over everything else. So why would Tim expect this to happen? Also, f***ing seriously, Tim's parents may be tired from all the baby sh** but they seriously don't think to put the seven-year-old in bed? Even though it's not this phone that's ringing, the f kind of placement is this. Either it's not plugged in and useless, or the cord is running across the floor and it's a clear tripping hazard. What's up, devil baby? Fart poop duty! The movie takes a break from its odd fascination with baby butts to dip its toes in good old-fashioned potty humor. The boss? You're a baby! Not only is this a roll credits moment, I assume this is the latter half of a drunken exchange between studio execs that led to this ridiculous premise being made into a movie. The average toddler spends, what, 45 hours a year on the potty? I don't have that kind of spare time. However, when you factor in all the diaper changing time, this all probably balances out. Or not! M2! Or not! M2. This goes on for some time. Can't ride a bike without training wheels? Even bears can ride a bike without training wheels. Citation needed. Also, this ridiculously detailed dossier on Tim has all the information on it. So why is the spot for teacher left blank? You would never ask your parents for an old toy. Man, f the way this movie makes things materialize out of thin f***ing air. Everyone wants the hot new thing. Why doesn't Boss Baby just come clean about his plan? It's not that complicated, and he could actually use Tim's help. I shall cast upon him a great curse. He shall not pass! If this movie's set in the 80s or early 90s, which is how it's being presented, then there's no way Tim would know this line from Lord of the Rings, considering that's not how it's set in the book. The tape recorder survives this. Tim's actually seeing these babies through his green glasses, so why have they all turned into ring-like demons? Babies everywhere! They're spreading! And apparently they're completely unsupervised by the parents that brought them here. Babies aren't getting as much love as we used to. Why? Have we been bad? All the babies have been drinking the same secret formula as Boss Baby, so why don't they all have old voices like him? Boss Baby presents his slideshow while staring right into the light of the projector. This baby's gonna have some f***ed up vision in the future. Stacy, read back the notes! I can't read. What's it say? Why can't she read or write, but Boss Baby can't? Is she not also in management? And if that's true, then why is she able to talk and understand what's going on? Also, this type of sh** is seriously gonna be happening the rest of the movie, isn't it? Hang on, I gotta head to the liquor store. Cookies are for closers. <laughs> All those five and six year old Glengarry Glen Ross super fans just got a good laugh out of that line. It's pretty clear these infants aren't old enough for solids yet, so leaving those cookies out is borderline irresponsible. What's up with the fucking parents in this movie? Let 
Go, you little... Oh, look, the kids are finally getting along. This little vignette does nothing to inform us what is reality versus fantasy. And it pisses me off that it's even included. So the baby is dragging the seven-year-old by the back of his car, but they're actually just playing? My head hurts. Oh! Oh! oh. So all that did happen in reality, I think. Who the f actually cares? Also, I guess these parents just quietly took their kids home with no repercussions on Tim's parents because the show in the backyard is never mentioned again. Oh, someone can't go down the stairs? Tim forgets the blatant assault that Boss Baby's committed for the last several minutes and thinks he can't get down some f***ing stairs? Tim is enrolled in the elementary level of the Prometheus School of Backing Away From Things. Oh, Dad! The baby can talk! Oh, can he now? And he can also teleport, considering he was just in the front yard two seconds ago. Templeton, let's be reasonable. If Tim can just pick the f***ing baby up and restrain him in his swing, I want the last three minutes of my life back. Really? Your parents are Lennon and McCartney. <laughs> All those five and six-year-old fans of the Beatles just got a good laugh out of that line. No, seriously, this is the baby that coordinated and executed a backyard attack on Tim, culminating in a miraculous appearance in the office. But let's watch him struggle for several seconds to get up into this bed. And more middle management for the company. Then shouldn't he be called middle management, baby? I want you to suck it. You suck it! No, it's for you to suck. Ugh, I'm not sucking that! Suck it! I don't know where it's been! It's not where it's been. It's where it will take you. Just keep in mind, this was dialogue written for a children's movie. I mean, if you only had the audio in this exchange, you would assume this was from an Alec Baldwin sex tape, or possibly a scene from The Getaway, which was also pretty much an Alec Baldwin sex tape, only with James Woods hanging out in the background. Welcome to Baby Core. Boss Baby pronounces this like Baby Core, but if that was the case, it should be spelled Core. This is Baby Corp. So this is where babies come from? Where'd you think? My parents told me that. You get them cookies. What? Oh, no. That's disgusting. First off, Tim's parents told him all about sex and reproduction at seven years old. Also, whatever Tim's parents did tell him, it's certainly not distillable into a two-second whisper. If Tim and the baby are holograms, why do they need to take the elevator? Upper management. He literally just said he was middle management. I'm willing to go along with the fantasy elements of this movie, even though we still don't know what's real and what's not. But this type of shit is just lazy. My dad says those who can, do. And those who can't, supervise. Whoa, Tim, don't wander into a cliche off with this dude that speaks almost only in cliches. We drink a super secret baby formula that keeps us babies forever. Then why the hell do some of you still sound like infants and some sound like a narrator in a Wes Anderson movie? This pie chart is supposed to show the distribution of all the love in the world, but only includes six items. It also assumes that equal amounts of people love birds and fish as cats. Also, where are hamsters, snakes, and sea monkeys? I get that these are babies, but they need to make some major changes in their R&D department. I'll get a promotion. The corner office with my own private body. Movie keeps contradicting itself, so I'll continue to point out that Boss Baby previously said, The average toddler spends, what, 45 hours a year on the potty? I don't have that kind of spare time. Make sense, movie about a hyper-intelligent infant trying to infiltrate a puppy developer. The pet convention is in two days, and I've got nothing! Yeah, but besides having a meeting with the other babies, what has Boss Baby done to get any information? He's just been f***ing with Tim. They'll take away my formula. I will turn into a normal baby and live here forever with you! But the formula was supposed to keep them babies babies while their brains continue to age, right? If they take away the formula, Boss Baby's body should immediately change into Captain Ellerby, not revert to an actual baby. I will help you, but just to get rid of you. Deal? Well, it's not really a deal, considering both of those items are what Boss Baby wants, but whatever. Why are their parents still so exhausted? The baby's getting around on his own these days, and the movie doesn't show them working particularly hard or at all. It's becoming more and more evident these two are just oblivious dickheads. We have to convince them that we're actual brothers. That we love like. No. That we love. There are so many moments like these that drag on far too long that I'm certain the original script was for a 30 minute TV show. Here comes a choo choo train! No, choo -choo, no choo choo! choo, -choo. It looks like it's already been eaten! God damn it, I have to point out again that earlier in the movie the boss baby was happily eating this shit with no issues. I mean, I'm happy they blurred out boss baby's baby jock, but what the f? What's all the racket? Because we suddenly don't give a flying shit about this baby and leave him alone for long stretches at a time. Tim, wake up, buddy. You're late for work. Doesn't Tim go to school? Even if part of this takes place over his summer break, the baby's been around for at least several months. Can the baby come too? I don't see why not. Further confirming their assholeness, it's now clear these parents haven't even named their second child yet. <sighs> Boss baby only has one bottle in his safe, so how's he been getting his constant supply of super secret formula? <laughs> yeah! Boy, this take your kid to work day looks a lot more like drop your kid off to do random carnival shit day. Surprise! You know that a movie has too many creepy moments when a weird ass old man pulling out a baby's pacifier and exclaiming surprise doesn't even crack the top ten. They replaced me with someone new. 
someone younger. This despite the fact that his replacement is the only baby at Baby Corp that doesn't look like a baby. Once I launch my forever puppies to every corner of the world, no one will ever want a baby ever again. Children of Men prequel is cleverly disguised as a boss baby movie. Where are the boys? I told them to stay in the puppy zone. Have I mentioned how Tim has the worst parents ever? Because if not, he does. Eugenia won't take her eyes off your children. Not for one second. Jesus, once this movie finally decides to Buscemi, it Buscemi's hard. Without that formula, I turn into a normal baby. Even though I should turn into a pre-Harrison Ford Jack Ryan. Toodaloo, toilet head! That's racist. Ah yes, much faster to use the tiny wagon as a skateboard on grass than to actually run after this slowly moving bicycle. Stacy! Stacy, come in! Not only does Stacy's mom not notice the clearly visible antenna on her dinosaur tour, she doesn't even hear a grown man's voice calling out to her infant daughter. I think we lost him! Okay, does Eugene have superpowers? Because it'd be super nice to see this chase scene at least work within what passes for logic of the movie. <laughs> Jimbo, an infant, survives this. There they are! Log death! What the sh**? Tim's parents had a huge head start. And, you know, are in a f***ing car! You did it! No! We did it! Um, while you guys are having your ultra cliche moment, your parents, the primary reason you just jumped over a moving train on a kid's bicycle, are still motoring to the airport. Mom! Hey. Dad! Hey. Hey. We don't want to miss our flight! Okay. Considering there's no way Tim's parents couldn't hear their child yelling for them from only a few feet away, I'm convinced they're the main villains in this movie. They're gone. I failed. Tim showed earlier that he knew how to use a telephone though, right? Even if this is the 80s or early 90s, he could still call their hotel and let them know what's going on. Please, stop acting like a baby! You're a baby! This buddy's fight in an animated adventure cliche is so cliche that I might as well be watching the secret Toy Story of Shreks. Also, by the way, nobody in this previously crowded airport is overhearing the seven-year-old loudly argue with the talking baby. And nobody stops to check on the seven-year-old boy that's been sitting alone for the remainder of this day. Holy shit, all the adults in this movie are assholes. Follow that Elvis! Where there's Elvis, there's Vegas! Movie goes for that current topical humor that all the kids these days know and love. Well, thank you. Oh, hold on, baby. Well, thank you very much. Sure, they're going to the Elvis convention, but why is the ticket taker who works for the airline also an Elvis impersonator? This is first class. Why is it empty? No one can afford it. But apparently you can just walk on through the curtains and claim a seat completely unnoticed. What are you two boys doing up here? Oh, uh, we're Captain Ross's kids. He told us to sit here. This works. What airline serves steak as an option to a baby and bone in? Oh. <laughs> Wait, Eugene not only also had time to pose as an Elvis impersonator, he was on the entire flight with Tim and the baby and did nothing? Jimmy's been sick. Where do you live, sweetie? The convention center? While these gals were willing to help out a kid and his sick brother, they were clearly going to keep the party going while they offered said help. Also, they kissed a baby they thought was deathly ill. Ah! <laughs> but how did you... Sorry, Tim, you've sinned too much in this movie to suddenly become excellent at CinemaSins. The likelihood of Puppy Co. having a space large enough to launch a rocket from the Las Vegas Convention Center is as high as Gru being able to build that giant lab underneath his residential neighborhood. Wait, did I just work a Despicable Me burn into this Boss Baby movie? You're damn right I did. You could have had your parents' love all to yourself again, but no, you blew it! Actually, no, they don't stop Francis's plan, then Boss Baby is fired and Tim's parents would continue to raise him. Why the hell would Francis keep an open vat of the super secret formula out here? Shouldn't this be on the rocket with the puppies? <coughs> this time, we'll raise him right. Fun fact, Eugene's last name is Plot Convenience. Yes! Tim! Movie continues its theme of making every adult clueless to their surroundings, considering no one in the entirety of the Las Vegas Strip sees this happening. You saved us! You're our hero! How the hell would they have known what was going on, though? They had no clue about Francis's plot or his background, and they were locked up in the box throughout the whole f***ing rescue. This letter should get you into the school of your choice. Kindergarten? So he's taking them off the formula and letting them grow up then? But he's still their boss, so they still work for Baby Corp. Honestly, this movie's logic is more confusing than Inception. Um, stay in school. How about go to school? Forget about the baby. Holy sh**. The cleanup babies that do this obliviate spell are the most terrifying parts of this movie. Also, why did they give Tim the option of whether or not to be neuralized? I know he was privy to the situation, but shouldn't standard protocol be to wipe the sibling's memory too? Huh, DreamWorks must be desperate to get their own minions. I guess the parents didn't have questions about what happened to Lam Lam. This idea could really blow up in his face. What if he just ends up with some random family? Damn it, movie. Just had to work in one more baby butt shot, didn't you? You need help. Look who's here. It's your new baby brother! Yeah, but last time mom was actually pregnant. And this time she looks, ah, oh, it. Is that a true story, daddy? Well, sweetie, that's how I remember it. The whole movie's a lie. I mean, maybe. I mean, definitely. Uh, probably. Damn you, unreliable narrator Toby McGuire. I'm proud of you.
Leslie. Back at you, Lindsay. Even though Tim is seven years older than Ted, it's the younger brother that sounds like the shadow and the older one that sounds like Peter Parker. F you! That's my name! <laughs> Animated movies don't give a crap about healthy eating, because I guess sweets make for better jokes or something. Boss Baby is no different. Cookies, pizza, Chinese takeout, not a healthy snack in sight. Where are they? But folks, I'm here to tell you, healthy can be delicious, and they combine in glorious fashion over at NatureBox. If you go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins and sign up, you'll get three free snacks with your first order. That's a complete and total lack of cost for three snacks. Incredible. Incroyable. My personal favorite is the sourdough cheddar pretzels. It's like eating awesome. It's like God left his pantry open on accident and NatureBox snuck in and stole his entire supply of heaven's favorite snack. Nine out of ten religions fail in their first year. But if salty isn't your bag... Thanks, but no thanks. Worry not. NatureBox has snacks for all flavor seekers. Salty, sweet, spicy, crunchy, cheesy, chewy. It was jammy, plummy, dense, and chewy. So join the revolution along with us. Go to naturebox.com slash cinemasins today. They ship snacks straight to your door, have a huge, ever-changing selection, and best of all, it's good for you and delicious. Wow. So what are you waiting for? Naturebox.com slash cinemasins. Go! Get out! <laughs> Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes. I would go get the Gandalf. Hands up, devil baby! Hail Satan! Hail Satan! Satan! Knock on my door! Knock next time! Yes, sir! Did you see anything? No, sir! I didn't see you playing with your dolls again! Good! Cookies are for closers. You think I'm f***ing with you? I am not f***ing.